Okay. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our presentation tonight on uh, Antarctica with Park Expeditions. Um, I have Chris Hanna joining us this evening to give us a little bit of information about the group trip that we are planning uh, to Antarctica in 2022. So Chris, thank you for joining us. My pleasure, Leslie. Thanks for having me and thanks everybody for, for joining today and anybody watching the recording. Um, it, it's such a pleasure to share the wonders of Antarctica with you all and, and to talk a little bit about this exciting group opportunity that we have together to, um, to sail to Antarctica aboard Quark Expeditions. So um, Leslie, if it's okay, I'll take it away. Um, Absolutely. As Leslie mentioned, my name is Chris Hanna. I'm a business development manager, so I look after my advisor partners, much like Leslie, in the Northeast of the United States. And I have over 11 years in the travel industry, uh, but this year definitely has been kind of a, a different year than most, for sure. Um, but I've been working with Quark Expeditions for a little over a year and a half, almost two years now, actually. Um, and I have had the pleasure of sailing with Quark Expeditions. And I also bring with me some experience in other expedition cruise experiences, such as in Patagonia. I have been to the fabled Cape Horn, the very southern tip of South America. And... Um, while I personally have not yet been to Antarctica, I was supposed to go in March, but you may have heard a little virus popped up around the world. I am looking forward to traveling there myself. So actually, if you join Leslie's group, um, you may have the opportunity to get to Antarctica before even me. But the beautiful thing about working for a company like Quark Expeditions is every single member of our team whether it's myself or one of the other business development managers, our inside sales team, our marketing departments, we've all traveled to the destinations and we've all sailed on our ships. So you are in the best and most capable hands in the industry. And today we're here to talk about the Travel Designs Antarctica Group for 2022. But first, I'd like to start by telling you a little bit more about why work with Quark Expeditions in particular. Um, Quark Expeditions is really unique in the expedition industry because for nearly three decades, the polar regions, Antarctica and the Arctic, are all that we've specialized in. And so who you choose to travel with to the polar regions is probably the most important decision you'll make. Of course, rule number one, as with any major commitment, is trust. You've got to have the faith that the expedition company you choose is going to be a good fit for your travel goals, has a proven track record, has the best expedition team and onboard staff truly make your voyage to the seventh continent, Antarctica, unforgettable. Of course, you also want to choose an expedition company that puts your well-being and safety first. That's very vital. Most of all, you want to know that the expedition company of choice knows the polar regions intimately. So a little bit more about why choose Quark Expeditions. Why did Leslie choose to work with Quark Expeditions for this group trip? One of the first things that you should always know about Quark Expeditions is we are uncompromisingly polar. In fact, it's all we do and it's all we have done for nearly three decades now. We have been the leading operator of expeditions to Antarctica, the Arctic regions, which include the North Pole, Greenland, Canadian Arctic, Russian Arctic, and Spitsbergen, Norway. For truly, the spear of exploration runs deep in our polar pedigree. So we are just absolutely passionate about creating transformational experiences for fellow adventurers who are visiting these regions with us. On every single Quark Expeditions experience, you will be surrounded by expert teams of expedition leaders, many of whom were part of 
our first trip, the first, we were, sorry, we were the first company to circumnavigate the entire continent of Antarctica. Many of our expedition team that you will encounter will possibly on that trip as well. We were also the first ever to do a tourism transit of the Northeast Passage, which is a historic route across the Russian Arctic. And more importantly, we're dedicated to the responsible tourism of these pristine areas. So we are not only founding members and sit on the board of directors of both IATO, who the International Association of Antarctic Tour Operators that regulates tourism in Antarctica, and IACO, the Association of Expedition Cruise Operators that uh, regulates tourism in the Arctic. And really importantly, I mentioned some of those expert expedition team members. We have the highest ratio of expedition team leaders to passengers in the industry. For every seven passengers, there's a polar expert on board that you will get to interact with. We have a diverse fleet um, that consists of all purpose-built polar vessels. And each one is a little bit unique and a little bit different, but they are all specially equipped. And really importantly, they're all under 200 passengers, which means that you have the best access to the polar regions. We're on a larger ship. There's many places you could not go that we were able to go. And depending on the size, you may just get to sail past and wave at the penguins. <laughs> and you could say you've seen Antarctica, but you cannot say you've been to Antarctica. With pork expeditions, you will step foot on the seventh continent of Antarctica. One of those specially built polar vessels that I mentioned before was the one that started it all for cork expeditions. In 1991, we took a ship very much like this one, one of the most powerful, most advanced nuclear powered icebreakers in the world to the geographic North Pole at 90 degrees North. We did that in 1991 and we still do that trip to this day. So always know that when you are talking polar expeditions, you are talking to the experts when you're talking about quark expeditions. It's important to note that our cabin prices are inclusive of daily landings, multiple daily landings, Zodiac boat cruising, those beautiful yellow parkas you're gonna see in a lot of my images, those are included <laughs> in yours to keep, as well as boots, Believe it or not, boots are a really important part of the journey. They allow you to get on shore safely, comfortably, and most important, dryly. And so you're not gonna have to pack boots and wonder if they're the right ones for you. We will include them, they're there for your use. As well, uh, all of our cruise fares will include meals, select alcoholic beverages and pre-cruise hotel as well as mandatory medical evacuation insurance. Pork Expeditions includes that for all of our passengers. So it's not something that you have to purchase extra. We offer a wide range of adventure options to enhance your polar experience, such as depending on the itinerary, kayaking or paddle boarding. Uh, in Greenland, for instance, we offer mountain biking. Um, and I'll go with more into what's available for this group departure when we get to that point. But I do want you to know that as a company, we specialize in getting people off the ship and doing a range of activities, including, as you see here, paddle boarding is another one. But one of my favorite things about Quark Expeditions is that we give back to the destinations we visit. From fundraising for polar bears to helping researchers study and count and protect the penguin colonies in Antarctica, rebuilding the South Georgia ecosystems, we truly have a mission to offer sustainable travel that will enable our guests and future generations to visit the polar regions for many more years to come. Um, our comprehensive sustainability strategy takes the form of four main pillars. These are our principles. It's protecting our planet. It's sustainable partnerships, ensuring that we're working with local communities and governments whenever possible to support them. And most importantly, leaving a positive impact. Uh, we believe that when you travel with Quark Expeditions, that you will learn a lot about the planet, how things are shifting and how things are changing. But more importantly, we're gonna equip you with the tools 
how you can make a difference, how you can make an impact, we create what we call polar ambassadors. So um, come along with Cork Expeditions, learn about the regions, but also come prepared to know how you can help. And of course, with our long history in the polar regions, we have been an industry leader in health and safety. This is a really important topic these days. Um, everybody's wondering, well, what's the future of travel going to look like? Uh, we have, have a multi-pronged approach to it. We have our, again, four pillars of health and safety, which consists of clean expedition ships, healthy fellow passengers, healthy expedition environment, and healthy staff. Um, when we begin sailing again in May of 2021, we will have a comprehensive plan in place. And so a lot of that is still being developed. It's changing day by day. So um, at this time, it's hard to give you a lot of specifics, but know that we will follow all of the industry leading guidelines, whether that be from governing bodies, government organizations, or health organizations. We've even been externally accredited for our safety program um, to a British standard. But let's talk more about Antarctica and where we're going to be traveling. So um, let's start with just a couple basics about Antarctica. Uh, since, its first con since the first confirmed sighting of mainland Antarctica on January 27th, 1820, um, it was found by a Russian expedition led by a gentleman named Fabian Gottlieb von Bellingshausen. I always forget that part. Fabian Gottlieb von Bellingshausen and Mikhail Lazarov. Um, since its first sighting, Antarctica has just remained a place of wonder and mystery for so many. Even the best and most traveled people on the planet, this is often their unchecked box, that last one, that seventh continent. And it is often just, um, it's been seen as difficult place to access, but Quark Expeditions, we make it easy to get you there. So today we're going to talk about, uh, of course, the specifics about the itinerary that Leslie and I have chosen to talk to you about tonight, and some basics like how to get there and to why travel there, and what you can see and do along the way. So let's start by how you get to Antarctica. Traditionally, and this is the most common way to access Antarctica, and it's the way that we will be also using for our trip, the ships depart from a little tiny dot of land called Ushuaia on Tierra del Fuego at the southern tip of Argentina. Um, it is the southernmost city in Argentina, and then um, it is just set at the, at the footsteps of the Andes Mountains, that's the little extension of the Andes Mountains that crosses Patagonia and into Tierra del Fuego. Uh, from Ushuaia, you will board your ship. We will have an included hotel night for you upon arrival. Just make sure that we have everybody in one place. And you will cross the famed Drake Passage. The Drake Passage typically takes one and a half to two days. And the sea days along the way are a wonderful time to get ready for the adventure that awaits. You'll get to know all of your fellow passengers. You'll join in daily talks, presentations with our world-class onboard polar experts. Um, these folks are guides, but they're also scientists. They're naturalists, they're historians. And we often will have other special guests who will introduce you just to the fascinating history, the biology, the ornithology, and glaciology of the region. Now, um, the Drake Passage, you might have heard of it if you've ever looked into a trip to Antarctica. It can be a little bit challenging to cross, if I'm putting it delicately. Um, but I want you to know that our ships are in the hands of the most capable captains. They are purposely built and stabilized, and they are well equipped for this journey. They make it many times. So again, you are in good hands, whether you have the Drake Shake or the Drake Lake on your way to Antarctica, but it's all part of the journey, folks. That little finger of land that you see on the right side of your screen that's sticking up from Antarctica, 
that's called the Antarctic Peninsula. That is where most people will experience Antarctica for the first time. It's home to the bulk of the wildlife and it is known um, just for its majestic views, its incredible scenery. And uh, that's where we will be visiting on our trip, Antarctic Explorer. The Antarctic Explorer is uh, exactly as I've already described to you. The total trip is 11 days. And we've selected a wonderful date from February 13th to the 23rd of 2022. We have exclusive group pricing for you. And um, you know, please, this is just a sample here, but make sure you reach out to Leslie. She can provide you with all of the information. And this is our most popular itinerary. We do this more and more people experience Antarctica with us on this itinerary than any other one. It's why we've selected it because it's perfect for first timers. You get the best of Antarctica. Um, along the way, you will conquer the famed Drake Passage in a, in a beautiful polar class vessel called Ocean Diamond. You'll explore majestic environments by Zodiacs. Experience iconic wildlife like penguins, whales, and other wildlife, as well as enjoying more of those presentations on regional history, including the Shackleton Expedition, which is a big part of Antarctic history, zoology, and geology. All the rates, as I mentioned before, they include quite a bit. If you notice, that list is large. Um, everything that's included is listed here, but Leslie will be able to provide you a copy that's a little bit easier to read, as well as we're very clear about what's not included so that you are best prepared and you have everything that you need. I'm going to leave this up for a moment, let you take a quick look at it, and then I'm going to move on, but we can always provide Why travel to Antarctica? What can you see there? Often in my role in speaking a lot about Antarctica with travelers just like yourselves, I get asked, well, what's the best time to go to Antarctica? And my response is always that there is no bad time. The season for Antarctica ranges from November until early April. And along that, uh, in that window of time, there are different opportunities to see different things depending on the timing. Um, for instance, early in the season, which is November and December, that's when Antarctica has just reawakened from the long winter. The glaciers are at the largest and they're beginning to melt, but also the penguins have only just started to arrive and are building their nests. But the time that we're looking at going, Incredible time to go because you have up to 20 hours of daylight. Those nests that the penguins have built earlier in the season, they are now starting to hatch. So you will see baby and some younger juvenile penguins along the way. Um, here during this time, the days just stretch on forever, as I said, up to 20 hours of daylight. The average temperature will range around 30 to 34. Or you have that, that cork parka, you're still well equipped. Um, so you really get the chance to see the penguins hatching as well as seeing the adult penguins. And the adult penguins, often you will see them out in the water because they're hunting to feed those new babies. So you often will see them swimming, frolicking, hopping uh, along the water. The whale watching is also incredible this time of year. Uh, we visit a place called Willamina Bay, and we call it Whalamina Bay because of so many opportunities to see the whales there. There's so much for you photographers. If you're a photography person, whether it be wildlife or landscapes, there's so much you're going to get out of there. And because it has uh, warmed up a little bit since the beginning of the season, those large glaciers have now started to melt. And so what that affords the opportunity for is really incredible action shots of the glaciers calving, these large cascades of ice falling from their surface. When you're at the water level looking straight up at a glacier from a safe distance, of course, and you see this, this ice tumbling down, 
all of a sudden you realize it's the size of a city bus. In the perspective of life, you feel about that big and you realize that just the world around us is filled with so many incredible things. So to be able to see those, those glaciers calving is just such a spectacular opportunity. Um, I'm gonna show you just some images. I won't do a whole lot of talking, but I, I wanna show you some of the, the types of images that you can see. Um, as you see, this glacier here has calved. So it's not a large tabular, so it's not just a big square shape. It's ragged, it's craggy. You see those pockets of that deep blue. Um, that's the old ice, the ancient ice showing through from underneath the newer snow. So you get really incredible colors and, and um, rich hues. You'll also get to see, of course, abandoned whaling stations and research stations, plenty of seals. And let's face it, the star of the show is going to be the penguins. Now the penguins are really incredible because they're so inquisitive. And while we have a, a, a lot of rules that we abide by to be able to visit them safely, such as never approaching them, well, the penguins don't follow the same rules. Nobody ever told them what their rules were. So often you will be kneeling down, taking a picture and the penguin will see this giant yellow penguin, at least it thinks it's a penguin, it's not sure, that's kneeling and they will wanna know more about what it is. So they'll come over and they'll actually start nipping at your zippers or maybe looking into your camera lens. And so to, to have those up close and, and personal experiences with nature, um, just absolutely incredible. Antarctica is absolutely incredible because, you know, nothing looks the same, nothing sounds the same, nothing feels the same. It even doesn't smell the same. It's as close as you can get to being on another planet while still never leaving Earth. Um, here's another image. This is one of my favorites of one of those glaciers that has kind of melted and taking on these, these really strange otherworldly shapes. I mean, this gives you an idea of some of that perspective I mentioned of being at the water's edge on a zodiac and observing these glaciers up close and personal. And of course, with the zodiacs, <laughs> we're very maneuverable. We can get um, close to many of the wonders. Um, here you see, this is, I, I call this the, uh, the gala ball with everybody in their tuxedos out on the ice. Uh, this is a colony of, uh, it looks like a deli penguin. So you will get to observe these and, and many other views. And of course, I mean, just every turn, the, the scenery and the wildlife is spectacular. And like I said, Penguins don't respect the rules, so you'll have some really up close and personal. Now let's talk a little bit about the ship that we will be taking our trip on. You know, I, it's really worth noting that for three decades, um, we have only done polar exploration and you learn a lot in 30 years of doing anything. And what Quark Expeditions has learned is the importance of choosing the right vessel for every type of expedition. We have a fleet that's unmatched in the polar regions and all of our ships are built to the highest ice, class, uh, ice classifications as well as technical specifications. And they are equipped to swiftly get our passengers on shore. That's the most important thing. Nobody travels all the way to Antarctica. Nobody crosses the Drake Passage just to say, oh yeah, I see it over there. You want to be immersed, you want to experience it. And to be part of the polar environment, you need to have the best access to it. And the ship that we'll be traveling on is the beautiful Ocean Diamond. Ocean Diamond really is a favorite vessel among all of our staff and our past passengers. It, with a lot of open public spaces, it really inspires a friendly onboard community with a variety of lounges, bars, presentation rooms, and you know, you will always be surrounded by like-minded explorers 
and you can gather and share your thoughts and reflections on some of the incredible things you saw that day. All the rooms do have exterior views, um, as well as, uh, believe it or not, sometimes you want to kick up your feet and relax after a, an exciting day. Flat screen TVs, of course, are featured. And some of the suites even do have private balconies. Ocean Diamond is one of the fastest ships in Antarctica. So this is a modern, stable super yacht and built for 189 passengers. This is actually one of the largest of our small expedition ships. So you really get a sense for just how intimate of an experience you can enjoy when traveling to Antarctica. The um, images you see here are some of the public spaces as well as one of the cabins. And I'm gonna show you the cabins a little bit more. Um, here you see our uh, main lounge as well as the bar in our club lounge. Um, as I mentioned before, the, the public spaces are really incredible on this. And so it, you always have an opportunity to kind of mingle. The exclusive rates that Leslie and I have put together for this trip, um, they, the best deals are in two particular types of cabins. The first one being the twin window cabin. This one offers an exterior view, of course, wonderful views of Antarctica but probably you will spend a lot of your time out on one of the open decks or in the lounges observing the environment. Or we also have some really great rates on the balcony suites. The balcony suites are the largest on the ship. And if you can see in the lower right-hand corner of your screen, the balcony itself is incredibly sizable. So you can just hang out out there um, in your yellow parka, of course, because it's going to be a little bit cold, and take in all of the views from the comfort and the privacy of your own suite. On board the ship, our fleet always provides guests with so many options to engage, to relax, to learn, but remain connected to the polar environment. We'll have daily briefings and recaps. Um, this image here actually shows one of my favorite people. Her name is Annie Ingalls. She, like most of our senior expedition staff, has over 150 polar expeditions under her belt, and she's a marine biologist. Um, she's Australian. She has this smooth, calm voice, one of the best presentations I've ever listened to. I always say I could listen to Annie read the phone book. So, she is the type, just an example of the type of people you will get to meet. If David Attenborough were a woman and Australian, he would be Annie Inkles. <laughs> um, we also, of course, offer many opportunities for onboard learning. I mentioned before the highest ratio of expedition team to passengers in the industry. Well, what does that mean? What that means is that you could be on deck and see a penguin and want to know, well, what kind of penguin is it? Is it a male? Is it a female? What does it eat? Where does it go? What does it do? You're probably not far away from one of those experts. And so they will always take the opportunity to, of course, give presentations, but they love informal opportunity. They also eat every meal in the dining rooms with the passengers. So they'll even kind of rotate tables. They get to know everybody on the ship and they find out what made you choose Antarctica, what's gonna make this trip special. And they're really going to help deliver that for you. I think it goes without saying, um, the wildlife is spectacular in a place like Antarctica. So all of our ships and Ocean Diamond is no different, all have easy to access spots, lots of open air and open, um, open decks for viewing areas. Um, so that you can observe the wildlife whenever it presents itself, whether you're on shore, in the Zodiac, or even on the ship. But always, one of my favorite opportunities on a Quark Expeditions trip is the opportunity to connect. You really arrive as strangers with the other, you know, 180 or so passengers on board. But through your shared experiences in some of the most incredible places on Earth, you form a connection and a bond 
And um, I know from my trip in June of 2019 to Spitsbergen, I still talk to many of the uh, fellow passengers that I met. And I've, that's, and I've heard that's a recurring theme. Um, these are like-minded travelers. These are people who are interested in many of the same things. They come from a variety of walks of life, but the thing that drew them all is the magic of a place like Antarctica. Um, here you see Solon Jensen, one of our expedition leaders, leading the toast. Um, this was just after the first sighting of the Antarctic Peninsula. So he got everybody out there to share in a toast for everybody's first glimpse of Antarctica. On board, you'll also enjoy excellent food. We have internationally trained chefs. They oversee a menu that changes daily. So from breakfast to lunch to dinner, you'll have plenty of variety. We can cater to a number of dietary or allergy needs uh, and preferences as well. And our, our culinary team really strives to satisfy just about any dietary preference. Uh, breakfast and lunch will feature a rotating buffet, usually themed, and um, dinner is a plated service with a variety of entrees and choices and, and uh, courses. Beer and wine are included with uh, dinner for everybody. And then we do have the open cash bar for you. Um, and you can enjoy that in one of the lounges or with any of your other meals, or just simply get together with any of the in included coffee that's available 24 seven, which is my favorite aspect. Um, afternoon snacks, cookies, little finger sandwiches, or just socialize over drinks during the presentations. The choice is yours. Where the rubber really meets the road is getting you off the ship. Expedition cruises are very unique. We don't follow a script. We don't say we're going to have you in X, Y, and Z area by 8 a.m. tomorrow. Please know that to be true. We set out with a plan. We set out with a framework. But being an expedition, we go where the opportunities take us, where the conditions are best, where the wildlife viewing will be best. So no two trips will be exactly the same. But the commonalities among all of our trips that we try excuse me, we strive to get you off the ship at least twice a day. And often we will find opportunities for a third or even a fourth. But some of the activities that are included off the ship include the polar plunge, <laughs> Zodiac cruising. Um, Zodiac cruising, I know I've used that term a couple times before, but um, I just want to make sure everybody is clear what Zodiac cruising, it's these inflatable boats. Um, these are ideal for getting you um, off the ship quickly and into the destination, whether it's the shore or cruising around. They are heavy, they are inflatable, but they are heavy duty. They're extremely safe and they're extremely stable. Um, these are really the workhorses of polar expeditions. And so, whether transferring you ashore or even transporting your luggage, these Zodiacs are really the a key to our operation. Also included will be hiking. Um, hiking in Antarctica is a really incredible experience because our expedition team will actually go off the ship first. They will survey an area, ensure that there's no threats or no hazards for, for anybody stake off a, a, a wide perimeter, and then you are free to choose. Do you want to sit on shore and just take in the silence and the joy? Do you want to go observe the penguin rookery that might nearby? Do you want to join in on a hike with one of the guides, whether they be a glaciologist or a marine biologist? You can pick and choose your interests. So you can do it all, you could do none of it, the trip is yours, no matter how active you might be. But if you are active and you want to really say that you experienced Antarctica, we also have a couple additional aid options for you. We have the paddle excursion. These are um, inflatable kayaks 
These are great if you've never kayaked before, but you want to be able to say that you did it. In a this is only 295 and you get to do it once, but um, the group sizes are kept purposely small. We have dedicated uh, polar kayak guides. So they are certified for kayaking in the polar regions. And we always will have at least two. Um, and so if you just wanna try it, if you just wanna say you did it, the paddle excursion is really incredible. You will get protective gear, dry suits. You don't have to worry about bringing any of that. That will all be provided after our included safety briefing. But if you're truly adventurous, if you really want to get the most out of it, if you're an experienced kayaker, we have a full sea kayaking program. This is only $9.95 per person, but every time we stop and disembark the ship, if the conditions are right, you will have access to the kayaking and you will get to do it. The kayaking is often done um, in conjunction with the shore landings. So um, you will spend part of your time kayaking and part of your time on shore. So you don't miss anything, but it's important that we do that to maintain um, the limit of 100 people on shore at any given time. But we do it this way so that um, you get some really up close and personal experiences from the kayak, but still get to enjoy some time shore as well. Another topic that I'm sure is on everybody's mind is why now? Why book now? Why consider booking this trip to Antarctica? Well, I want you to know that you can not only book, but travel with confidence with Bork Expeditions. Um, up to 30 days before the trip, you could rebook um, for just about any reason. We have a COVID-19 protection guarantee so that if um, you are unable to travel for a COVID-19 related reason within the 30 days before the trip, you could rebook. Um, we of course are offering a refund guarantee in, in conjunction with our standard terms and conditions our four pillars of health and safety that I mentioned. And for Leslie's group, I've also extended a reduced deposit program. So you can get booked and be on your way to Antarctica for a reduced deposit, only 10% deposit, if you book through January 31st of 2021. So now I'd like to just pause here, see if there are any questions. Oh, one of the questions, Chris, um, you know, it's on a lot of people's mind now, you know, we're going to be going to a very remote area. What is the medical staffing on the ship? That's a, that's a really good question. So we will always have shipboard doctors. Um, access to them for most routine things, if you're having seasickness, if you are worried that you um, might have hurt yourself and you want them to take a look. That will be included, including the CSEC medicine. If there's anything more advanced, then of, of course there, there might be a charge, um, but, but for most basic needs, it could be taken care of for no additional cost. Um, depending of course on the severity, then we will need to look into the logistics of what your situation might need, but they are qualified trauma or ER doctors always. So they are trained for um, it's not a podiatrist, put it that way. <laughs> these, these are people who deal with acute and often urgent medical situations. So uh, they are well equipped to take care of you. Awesome. Um, I know that I'm looking forward to the quark jacket. <laughs> That's one of my favorite parts of this. Um, however, is there a recommended uh, list of clothing items that you'll need for this trip that we'll have access to or can send out to everyone? Yeah, that's a great question. Yes, there is. Um, uh, I have a wonderful packing list with some recommendations. Now, um, there's a couple things on there that are not recommendations. They're actually required, but we can't provide them because it's kind of personalized nature, like waterproof pants. Um, 
as you imagine, the logistics of finding everybody's size and waterproof pants would prove difficult. So we do, um, we do prefer that uh, we leave it up to you to bring them. They are required for boarding the Zodiacs because the last thing you want, um, sometimes there's some splashing, the last thing you want is to be wet in the polar region. So the waterproof pants are a mandatory, but we'll send you great guidelines for um, socks, how many and, and types of socks, how many types of gloves, what different types of gloves you should consider. Um, layers, thermals, all those things, we'll, we have a great packing list for you to help you. Awesome, thank you. Okay, well, if there are no other questions, um, this will conclude the presentation, um, but I would like to leave with just a, uh, a quick video that I think really will set the mood. It's only 60 seconds, so bear with me. But if nothing I said grabs somebody yet, this is going to do the trick. So here we go. When people come to Antarctica, it's not uncommon for them to feel like it is a dream. When you ask someone, describe your experience. What is it like to be here? They'll say things like, is this real? For the first couple of days, everything is vivid. As you sit in a zodiac, floating at sea, near seals, near penguins, ice in almost every direction, giving that feeling of pure wilderness. So, I invite you all, take the polar plunge with Leslie, Quark Expeditions and join us in Antarctica. Thank you so much, everybody. And uh, for the keen eyed observers, yes, that's me doing my polar plunge in Spitsbergen. Um, if you're curious at all, the water was 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so go outside. And that's about what the water felt like, but I, obviously a little bit colder than that as you, I wasn't wearing my parka for the jump. Um, you, get, you get a patch, you get a certificate saying you survived the polar plunge and um, nothing makes you feel more alive. <laughs> or I'm sure. Or, <laughs> I don't know if that's the right one, but nothing will make you, you know, wish that you were not alive, depending even for that couple seconds, um, like the polar plunge. I invite you all, try it while you're there. How many times will you get to say you've done the polar plunge in the Arctic or Antarctica? So thank you thank so you. much, everybody. Thanks, Chris. I really appreciate you chatting with us this evening. And I look forward to everyone participating in this wonderful Antarctica cruise.